Hello, uh, this is my first brew vlog. I'm in my little brewery in the shed at the moment, and I'm hoping going forward and do some more of these videos and actually have brew footage and things that are actually interesting to see. But for the first one, I thought I'd just uh, show where I'm working just now and talk about one of my beers. So, filming this on a Friday after work. So this is, I've been thinking of this all day. So, the beer I have here is from Ron Pattinson's blog, Shut Up About Barclay Perkins. And it is a 1851 William Younger XP. I bottle condition all my beers, so you can probably see quite a lot of yeast at the bottom of that. So, clarity wise, not great, uh, but this recipe does have an absolute ton of hops. Uh, I think it was about 350 grams of East Kent Goldens. Um, over a 90 minute boil, but I'll put the link to the recipe in the comment or the description below. So, first off, got nice, uh, fresh, fruity aroma. It's only been in the bottle for three weeks, and it was in the fermenter for three weeks. I gave it a little bit longer. Uh, cheers. So you get the big hop, fruity punch in the beginning. Even and you don't expect it with it being uh, like traditional English hops, but I, I really like that. It's got a a dry finish, a bit like a bit like an old fashioned bitter. Uh, so ABV, it was only supposed to be five point eight. And this, from my shoddy measurements, came in at six point three. So it's reasonable strength, got a good uh, amount of body, even though it finished a little bit lower. Uh, FG, supposed to be 10.15, ended 10.12, not too bad. I do notice in a lot of Ron's recipes, the attenuation is pretty poor on the kind of historic recipes that I don't really know how to replicate that with I suppose I could use no yeast nutrients and maybe stress out the yeast a little see if it'll finish a bit higher mash could mash higher but then the recipe doesn't ask for me to mash any higher um, yeah it's a very simple this one pretty much a smash uh, it's a smash beer so pale malt and goldings so I used Chevalier, first time using that. This is also one of the first beers where I've um, changed my water profile. And I added Camden as well. So I think that's made a big difference in my beer. I would have a, some of my other beers that are older uh, at some point. Um, but this does actually taste more like, I hate to say it, like a commercial beer. Like one, a beer that you'd actually pay money for. Clarity I could work on. It's very easy. Uh, did add Brewer's Clarex, um, which should reduce chill haze and gluten. But to be honest, I don't know if I've noticed any difference in any of my beers <laughs> since I've started using it. Mm, maybe if you are kegging, you might notice more of a difference. Uh, but yeah, it's really, I'm very pleased with that one. Uh, plan on doing more of those sort of historic uh, recipes and I'll try and get brew footage of them. I'm, this Sunday I'm going to be making my Christmas beer and it's the second attempt at making it. Uh, I'm going to try the 1914 Courage Imperial Stout. Uh, 
Okay, I'll stick the, the blog post in the, the description. So I tried making that a few weeks ago. Uh, and I bought a, one of the big igloo coolers to use as a mash tun. Because the grain, I've got a grain father, but you're sort of limited when you want to make full batch big beers. Just because I think it would only really hold 8 kilos of grain. I think about that. So, rather, you can do a reiterated mash, which is you do half the grain, you mash it, then take that out, empty it, fill it again with the next half, mash again. And I couldn't be bothered, so I thought I'll get one of these big cooler things uh, and I'll just mash and then I'll boil in the grain farmer. So, it went okay, but I think I mashed too, like, really too high. I think it was in the low. 70s. I was trying to take account of the temperature of the grain, the temperature of the mash tun, and I just don't think I measured it right. Also, that slap dash with my uh, water measurements as well. So, got into the fermenter, had a blowout, so cleaned that up, and then one of those eye spindles in the fermenter, uh, and then I noticed that after about four days, it stopped at 1040. Uh, which is way too high, especially since I, I didn't hit the OG target, like, even close. I had to top up with quite a bit of, like, golden syrup to try and up the the gravity. Uh, so that went down the drain. I thought, I'll try again, and I'm going to do the reiterated mash, even though I really, really don't want to. Um, a normal mash for me is messy enough and long enough. So, yeah. But... So one off, I suppose. I don't do these massive beers um, very often. I'll still probably have a couple of tins of golden syrup in standby just to up the gravity. Um, I, I use golden syrup because looking at these older recipes, those invert number one, two, three, four, invert number one. I think it's about the colour of golden syrup. Golden syrup's partially inverted, whereas well, the invert syrup's fully inverted, but it's close enough. Um, back to that. So you can see, a bit of lacing, but not much in the way of head retention. Uh, did have the glass in the dishwasher, so I never know if it's the rinse aid, even though I, I did give it a good blast with the tap water before coming out. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and get some brew footage of what I'm making Sunday. Whether I will put that up in like a homebrew Wednesday type blog video or I'll keep it for a grain to glass and, and make a video nearer Christmas time. Uh, also, if anybody's got any um, thoughts, I plan on not priming the bottles for this and hoping there's just over time the complex sugars will get broken down and create carbonation. Because uh, I know we can get a bit of carbonation creep um, with the big dark beers over time. Uh, and I would quite like to lay some of these aside for um, next Christmas as well. Uh, if I, I can stop myself from drinking them <laughs> or giving them away. I give away quite a lot, man, the homebrew. Uh, so I will show you quickly my setup. So I hadn't brewed for about two years after I moved from a flat into this house and then eventually I got a shed so this is it's now kitted out solely for me to use so quite lucky there uh, green father in the corner that little gum tree bought fridge and my very chonky cut fermentation chamber which is actually pretty decent got a stout in there at the moment and as you can see there is a little reptile heat pad in there and it's doing quite well it's keeping that at just about 20 C uh, I started the fermentation at 17 and a half and then done 18 and a half and then after about a week or so I bumped up to 20 so Possibly bottling that this weekend, if I can be bothered, I think I might leave another week. 
Um, oh. And the cool box on top of the fridge, I have found, is actually just the right size to hold my Erlenmeyer flask, so I can do starters. So, the cable for the uh, start plate sticks out. So today, I am going to be making the starter for the beer on Sunday. Uh, and it's going to be my first time trying these. So, made an order from the malt miller. I'm very, very lazy, so I thought, I've got to give these a try. And the idea is, one can of this, plus the same volume again in stereo water, will give you a starter of 10.40. Uh, for the beer I'm making on Sunday, I'm going to use two cans uh, and extra water. It is quite expensive, actually. But... Yeah, give it a try. If, it's, if it makes my life a bit easier, yeah, that's a sort of trade off. Are you willing to spend the money or spend your time? Uh, we'll see. I was on special, so that made it a bit easier. But uh, yeah, sorry if this is a, a bit rambling. Uh, never made a video like this before. But uh, cheers, and hopefully, I'll see you again soon and I'll make more interesting videos. Bye.